Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my balcony here. So it's now late August, so it's the end of summer pretty much. Here in Scotland it gets quite cool quite early, so to be honest we've had a really good summer this year, it's been very hot and dry. Our temperatures probably in the mid-twenties quite a bit during June and July, which is very unusual for us. But we've now gone back to our usual weather. The last couple of weeks have been around 14, 15, 16 degrees, about 10 degrees at night, so it's been quite a bit cooler. But the plants are still doing quite well, nonetheless. So I'll start off here with my petunias. You can see the purple one here has done particularly well. It's trailing down quite far. I'll just try and pull the camera a bit further back so you can see how far it started the trail. It isn't completely covered in flowers, but it seems to go through phases. This red one, for example, was actually completely covered in flowers. You can see some of the older ones here. Um, but this middle section seems to be going through a phase of having less flowers, but then there'll be several more coming later on. You can see the top sections are really covered. But what's quite interesting to see is they flopped forwards quite a lot. And what I've done this year is I've tied it on, see some string there. That's stopping them from falling over because in previous years when they got to this size, they would always fall over. They'd cross the plants below and also damage themselves. So they're not falling over this year, which is why they're, they're looking so much healthier and better. They're not snapping their stems or anything like that. But what's interesting to see is when it's flopped over, it started to put up a lot of new growth from the top. Not so much in this purple one. You can see a bit of new growth, not doing too bad. But certainly on the red one, it's probably about 10, 15 centimeters of new growth from the back. So that's probably gonna come up and then fall over again. But it just depends how long our growing season is this, this year. Hopefully we'll have a warm September and these will keep going for, no, for another month or so. But it really does vary. But there, there is, you can see some burn on here. That's because I've been putting on some uh, antifungal spray on here because the, I find the petunias are really bad for powdery mildew. And the last few years, my, my petunias have done well until about September. And then with the falling off and damaging the stems, um, they've also got powdery mildew, which has really kind of finished them off. So hopefully this year we'll keep away from the powdery mildew. They'll last a little bit longer. But as I was saying, that's probably why these have got burnt tips, because a bit of the fungicide got into the petals and it tends to burn the petals. So I try and keep the fungicide off the petals. Coming around, I got my dahlia, which is really getting big now. This is the one that I put into a big new pot recently. I'll uh, put a link up in the iCard, iCard now so you can see the repotting video. You see, it's a good-sized pot, really lost green foliage, looking really healthy now. And it has finally got some flower buds, so you can see one there. There's also some flower buds on all the other stems, but they're very small, only just starting. So this will probably be at least three or four weeks until it flowers. This is a large flower variety, so even once the flower buds appear, it's a good two, three, maybe four weeks until it actually flowers. But it's doing really nice. I hope to give you guys an update on that flowering. Geraniums here on the side, they've just kind of finished flowering. There is a new flush coming. You can see this, these two coming up at the end. Uh, I did actually just deadhead these just the other day, so that's why there's no flowers in these ones. There are a couple of flowers in these, but again, these are just deadheaded. You can see there's plenty coming. There's uh, lots of them just on the way. There's one just about halfway through its flowering period there. And there'll be several more coming. You can see all over it, there's new ones coming and there's another one there. See another one there. So this will be covered in flowers again in a few weeks. It just happens to be in between flowering at the moment. I find with my balcony, most plants go in flushes. So some plants are looking really good at the moment, best I've ever looked. Other ones I've just missed a flush or they're just coming into a flush. And up here, I've also got my one of my trailing fuchsias. This one's doing really well. You can see it's got lots of flowers. It's been flowering constantly pretty much. Um, looking almost as good as it's looked so far. I noticed it does seem to have all the flowers at the end. It doesn't have much further back. It doesn't really branch much, but I think that's because it's a trailing variety of fuchsia. Generally, if, if the trailing ones they grow very long stems, so they trail over. So they don't really branch as much, which is why you can see up in the middle, there's not any flowers. And it's on the new growth that the fuchsias put their flowers out, which is why the middle of it hasn't got any flowers, but the tips are absolutely covered in flowers. So coming down here, I've also got my large bonsai tree. I made a video on that recently, so I'll put another eye card up for you to see that. Over here is my my biggest fuchsia, this is a giant one, called a voodoo one. Uh, the, the variety is called voodoo. Um, I did actually have this, this was at its peak just a couple of days ago. You can see there was another flower here, here, here and here. So a lot of them have fallen off, but it's still looking really good. There's still loads of flowers on it. You can see the size of them, absolutely huge. And I'll just pick a flower from my uh, Tom Thumb fuchsia, which is a small variety. So you can see the size difference. So you can see there on the left, that's a small variety. Fuchsia, basically the same shape and everything with the flowers, similar colors as well, but much smaller, probably 10, 20 times the size this one is compared with this. So you can see there the real big size difference. But this one has done really well. 
you can see lots of growth coming on it. I need to nip some of these longer shoots out that aren't flowering. I'm going kind to of keep a pom pom shape at the top. And it's nice to see we've got some more flowers starting to develop on the lower down stems, even though they haven't got many leaves. So I'm quite happy with that this year. It hasn't put on a huge amount of growth, but it's just been putting on lots of flowers. So that's what I'm re wanting really. So I'll be quite happy with this fuchsia. Coming around, I've got my rose. It's just going to come into flower probably in another two weeks time. I did actually deadhead it. Um, probably about a month ago, maybe a bit longer. So you can see where it's been cut at those points in here and down here. But I sent out lots of new shoots. So you can see I've got three flowers coming on this stem. I've got four flowers coming on this one. And we'll have to see what this one does. This could be what they call a blind stem where it's just growing with leaves, no flower buds. I'll leave this another couple of weeks. If there's no flower buds in this after then, then I'll have to cut it back. Hopefully another bud will come up and then it will get some flower buds. So that's the rose, looking very healthy, no fungal issues. It is my alpha bell rose, so it doesn't normally get fungal problems. You can see it's always got nice glossy leaves. Now there has been some vine weevils, unfortunately. You can see down here, some vine weevil damage on the leaf. Uh, also on this one as well. So I have to keep an eye on that. I'll probably have to do a, a treatment for vine weevil uh, later this year. They're becoming a bit of a pest. So coming along, this is my Tom Fom. Uh, future. I think it's looking at its very best at the moment. It's looking absolutely fantastic. Interestingly though, from, from this side you can't actually see that many flowers. Most of the flowers are hanging over the edge. So I'll show you a picture now of what it looks like from the other side and from underneath because that's certainly the best angle to see it from. So as you can see there, there was loads of flowers on this, looking really nice. And they really are best seen from below, because from this, they are kind of growing towards the light. And uh, because they hang down, the foliage above kind of covers them, but underneath they hang down, so you can see them much more easily. And that's why it looks much nicer when it's hanging down. So this works really probably would work really well in a kind of hanging basket or something like that, because it is best seen from below. Going along, this is my other, uh, Dahlia. I'm not doing as well as the other one, but it's a bit further ahead with this flower bud. You can see quite a sizable one there. This again is a giant variety, so they should be really big flowers. Quite fat flower buds. I'm hoping maybe in two weeks we'll get a flower. Let's just have to wait and see. They're still very tight, the buds, and they'll get a fair bit bigger because, as I say, they are giant varieties, so it takes a long time for them to develop, but it's doing quite well. Over here, I have my Angrianthemum. This is looking really good, the Angrianthemum. Um, this is another one where, again, it's best seen from the outside. It's all kind of growing our way from here, so it's going towards the light. So from the balcony itself, it doesn't look too great. But I'll pick it up and turn it around so you guys can see. That's probably looking at the best it's looked all year. You can see it's absolutely covered in flowers. You can almost not see any of the leaves because it's so covered in flowers. It's done really well for me, this one. Uh, they probably enjoyed the hot weather we had earlier in the year because it really likes the hot, sunny conditions. And it's got lots of flowers coming on it. A few more buds coming as well. You can see several buds. This will probably finish this flush in a couple of weeks. Then it won't have many flowers for another couple of weeks. And then hopefully it will have a last flush just before the frost. So we should get another display like this. And it'll be slightly larger by then. So this is another one that's done really well for me. And so I'm happy with this agranthemum. So moving along, I've got my main planters on the balcony here. Um, the Chrysanth snow, uh, Snowland here, which is um, basically an annual bedding chrysanthemum, um, this has done quite well. It's not, it's not as spectacular as my other plants. My other plants, you know, they tend to be completely covered in flowers, you can't see the leaves. This one's a bit more sparse. Also, you can only really see it if you're a distance away. If you're right next to the balcony, you can't see it too well because the uh, lobelia tend to cover it up from from a, a sharper angle so if you're right next to the balcony you can't see these if you're from a distance probably like the other side of the road you can see this quite well though and they've done not too bad there has been some uh, black fly you can see a little bit on on the stem there also had some fungal issues we've had some powdery mildew i'll just show you a little bit close up here so you can see that white bit on the um, on the leaf is a start of powdery mildew so i'm having to spray this quite regularly to try and keep it at bay but there's only so much I can do with fungicide and eventually this will probably succumb to the powdery mildew. So probably in the next update this might have died. Um, we'll just have to see if we get some nice warm sunny weather. This will hopefully perk up, fight off the powdery mildew and be fine. But if we continue with cooler days and wetter, damper weather, this is going to succumb to the mildew and might be dead by the next update, unfortunately. Also, we did have some botrytis at the bottom. You can see I've had to cut away quite a bit of the stem because this whole plant pretty much died on that side. 
can see some of the, the mold there at the bottom from the botrytis that killed off that plant. But the rest of the plant kind of filled in the space, so it's not really lost any other show, which is good. At the front, the lobelia is looking great. I'll show you a picture now so you can see what the lobelia looks like from the front. I'll also show you a picture of a general overview of the, uh, the balcony so you can see how good it looks from the front. As I say, because it all grows towards the sunlight, all the flowers tend to face outwards. So you, to get the best display of the balcony, it's actually from the pavement down on the street side as opposed to actually in the balcony. So another plant I have at the front here is my Osteospernum. This again, you can't really see from the balcony because it's kind of hanging over the edge, but you can see it from the front quite well. And I'll just pick this up now so you can have a closer look. You can see there, it has got quite a size now. It's got lots of flowers on it. Just passing its uh, peak at the moment. Uh, I did actually deadhead this just the other day. You can see a lot here. You can see these cut stems where there was lots and lots more flowers. This one's just starting to go over from its recent peak. So this will probably be almost empty of flowers in about a week or two's time. But then what should happen is what it does always is it sends up loads of new flower shoots. You can see there's a few buds starting on this one and there are lots more shoots coming up but these shoots haven't got flower buds yet so it's probably going to be almost a month until this has another flush. It's quite a while until it has the next flush but it's doing quite well. I'm quite happy with it so far. We'll see how it does over the autumn. Cool weather doesn't seem to affect it too badly. It does like hot dry weather. It does prefer hot sunny weather but um, We'll see how it does. It doesn't normally have too many disease problems and as long as the frost stays off, it generally does keep flowering quite well. So moving along now to my, uh, my rain pipe planters. I've got my Nemesia Wisley Vanilla variety at the top. This has actually really surprised me because this was lo like looking like it was going to die back. What was happening is it was growing lots of flowers in spring but it didn't really grow any leaves. I was worried it was just going to flower itself to death and die back. And then I uh, come, um, I think it was probably about July time, I cut it right back. Um, cut all the old flowers off because it was starting to set seed. It had almost no leaves at all. I thought it was going to die. And I set up loads of new leaves. You can see a few of the fresh leaves on the bottom. And then not long after I set up the leaves, you know, it's been covered in flowers ever since. Set up loads of flower buds. It has a really great smell. It smells like vanilla, so I'm really happy with that one. Further down, I've got my geraniums. As I was saying, the other geraniums on the other side, they're not, um, they're just kind of finished from a flush of flowers. So they're in between stages, you know, I just did headed them, lots coming, but nothing on display at the moment. Whereas the ones on this side are the complete opposite. They're just about the peak of their flush. So you can see this one needs dead heading. Uh, quite a lot of old dead flowers on that, so I'll take that off soon. These ones are looking quite good. They're kind of in between, there are a lot of flowers on top, a lot of new flowers coming. But there's not too many other ones coming up yet, but there will be. As soon as, as, soon as these start to get dead headed, there'll be plenty more growing. And it has grown a lot this year, it's quite a size. Um, and these really do well, the geraniums. I find they flower right into October, November if we don't have any hard frosts. So even when the temperatures do get cooler, these tend to keep doing quite well. So further down, I've got another Nemesia. This has been one of the best flowers of the summer so year. It's always been absolutely covered in flowers. Sometimes there's so many flowers you can barely see the leaves. You can see, especially around this side, but it's a bit sunnier. It's really covered in flowers. At the moment, there's a, I did give it a good head, dead heading not long ago, so you can see a lot of new fresh shoots coming back from further further behind the flowers. These are all going to have um, flowers on them soon. You can see this one, for example, there's lots of uh, flower buds starting on that. So that'll be flowering in a couple of weeks. These ones are a bit young, but they're going to be flowering soon as well. So this should keep going well for me, hopefully. I'll see how it does come with the autumn with the cooler temperatures. I'll just keep deadheading it. Should keep growing. And if there's anything like the Demisia up there, hopefully it'll be hardy enough. Should survive the winter. This one survived about minus five this year. So if we get minus five, hopefully this one will also survive. I'm not sure if this one's a hardier one or what, but we'll just see, see if it survives the winter. And then finally, I've got my training geraniums here. These have been a little bit shaded. I think I should have probably put these higher. I may put the Nemesia on, on this level because I should have had something that maybe grew up because these have been trailing down, but they've been a bit shaded because the chrysanthemums here have really started to take over and they're kind of shading this now but it has done quite well. You can see it's put a lot of growth on. It's certainly very healthy. It's got these dark, shiny, lost foliage. Quite a few flowers, but I do find these never really have as many flowers as the other geraniums, even if they are having really good light levels. They don't flower quite as well, but it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it, so I'll just, um, I'll just keep it going. Hopefully the, the uh, lack of light doesn't kill it off too quickly. But these do suffer. These don't tend to overwinter very well. 
the normal geraniums I find overwinter much easier here in Scotland. These geraniums do struggle a bit more. I've overwintered them places like Switzerland before. That wasn't an issue, but then in Switzerland they get much hotter, hotter summers, and so and they also have colder winters. So I think what it is is these go completely to dormant in winter. In Switzerland, we used to put them in the cellar. The cellar was probably in about three to five degrees, and they would be completely dormant, wouldn't grow, and they'd be fine. Come summer, they would start growing again with the nice hot temperatures. But when I tried it here in Scotland, it's too warm, so they keep growing. But because there's not enough light, they just kind of weaken themselves, then they just slowly die. So I'll see, I might be able to keep this going this, this winter, but I'm not too hopeful. What I can always do is take some cuttings or just buy a new plant the next year. So that's pretty much all the uh, flowers on my balcony anyway. I have got a few other plants, like I've got my money plant out here at the moment because I'm trying to encourage it to flower. I t uh, money plants that need cold temperatures to flower, so I'm going to leave it out here as long as possible. Hopefully by October, November time, I might have some flowers starting on that. I've also got some of my peppers here, as um, they've had a lot of aphids recently and there's a lot of beneficial insects such as hoverflies, ladybirds and also parasitic wasps. So. These have now been cleared of aphids pretty much by those beneficial in insects, which is great. So these will probably go inside soon, especially as they don't like the colder temperatures. It's a bit too cold for them at the moment. And that's probably why, even though they've got lots of flowers, they're not really setting fruit at the moment. So I'll be putting them inside soon. Also, I've got my Sonetti, which is so hacked right back. Um, if you've seen my previous video, I'll show you a photo now of how that looked just in the last update. It looked really sickly. Looking very poorly at the moment. It's got a lot of leaf miner. It's just kind of it's just kind of exhausted itself with all the flowering. It needs a bit of deadheading. But uh, what I'll do is I'll cut this back hard soon. That'll encourage a new flush. And by the end of autumn, we should have another display. There should be a lot of new growth lower down. That will hopefully come back nice and fresh. As you can see, as I cut it back, it's really responded really nice. Lots of new growth, and that's what the Sinetis always do. You cut them back hard. They regrow really strong and healthy and get another good display. The only problem I do have is there's a lot of leaf mining on it. You can see that's what's causing these tracks in the in the leaf. Basically, there's a the kind of like a small moth, and it lays its eggs on the leaf, and then the larvae crawl around inside the leaf, eating all the material away. So that causes a lot of stress to the plant. It doesn't get as much light as it should do because its leaves are not functioning as they should. And this can actually kill the plant or at least seriously weaken it. So there's not much I can do about it. It could soak it with loads of pesticide, but I don't really want to soak it with pesticide if I can help it. And because the insects live inside the leaf, the beneficial insects can't get in there to deal with it. So it's quite a big problem. Um, what you can do is you can pick up all the leaves that are infected. I've tried that in previous years in my flat, but uh, there's so many in this local area that even with picking off all the flat, all the leaves, more and more just kept coming in to lay the le their eggs. So I just ended up with a plant with no leaves. Um, We'll see what happens to this. Hopefully this will flower soon. You can see there is a bud there and this loves the cooler temperatures so this will keep growing really well into quite late in autumn as long as there's no frost to kill it off. So say it likes cooler temperatures but it doesn't like frost. So I think that's it from the balcony update. As you can see there's plenty of bees, lots of, uh, there's always lots of pollinating insects here on the balcony so they're obviously enjoying the flowers. Hopefully I'll keep this going into the autumn. It really depends what kind of weather we have. You know if we have a very uh, cloudy autumn or if it's an early frost things are going to go over quite quickly either the frost will kill them or things like powdery mildew will come in and kill the plants if it's lack of sunshine and, and there's cold temperatures but we'll just see how it goes and I'll give you guys an update hopefully sometime in September otherwise October and if all the summer flowers do die off then I'm just going to replace them with winter and spring flowering uh, plants so I'm still going to have some colour on my balcony.